Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A deadly fire at a Detroit group home. We'll tell you what investigators think might have started that fire that killed one man and hurt four others. And we've got more snow on the way on your Friday. We might get some flakes today, but there's even more ahead for this weekend. And President Biden makes his first trip to Michigan since being elected. And that's happening today as he tours the Pfizer plant in Portage, responsible for rolling out the first coronavirus vaccines. The president is expected to depart Joint Base Andrews in about 15 minutes and land in Kalamazoo before 2 o'clock at around 1.45. The trip had to be postponed a day because of the winter weather that was hitting much of the country, including Washington. Uh, Rob Maloney is waiting on the president's arrival in Portage. And uh, Rob, this visit comes as Pfizer is promising to speed up vaccine distribution having, after having to be stalled because of winter weather. That's right. The, the weather apparently has uh, stopped a lot of the deliveries across the country, including here in the state of Michigan. President Biden looking to push forward his $1.9 trillion uh, program uh, to American Rescue Plan, he calls it, uh, and that the vaccine is at the focal point of all of that. So he decided he wanted to come out here today. It was originally planned for yesterday's coming today uh, to come and tour the plant, talk to some of the workers and get a feel for what is transpiring here in the plant. Now, uh, we are outside this plant, sprawling plant, much like an auto plant, uh, just south of I-94 uh, in uh, Kalamazoo, uh, in the little town of Portage. And let's talk a little bit about the plant that he's going to be visiting today. It was established back in 1948. It employs 2,800 people, like I said, much like an auto plant. And the footprint here is 1,300 acres. Now, they say that this is the sole finishing plant uh, and the manufacturing of Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. That is the one that was the first one to get the green light, and they're looking to ramp up production here. And, of course, this is also considered one of the largest producers of active pharmaceutical ingredients in the entire nation, actually in the entire world. And so there's a lot riding on what goes on in this plan about getting more of the vaccine up and out and into the arms of Americans. The president believing that there is a considerable uh, import in him just coming out here and, and talking to the workers. So he'll be here today. He's going to be here with the governor. Uh, we also believe that there will be uh, some uh, either senators or representatives with him. I'll have to check and see exactly who and what uh, accompanies the president on this trip. But he is going to be talking about this. He'll be having a speech or, not, or some remarks here uh, this afternoon later and so we will have the full coverage of that coming up on local four news at five and at six reporting live from portage rod malona local four all right rod thank you for the update there we have more from the president's visit as rod mentioned at, on first at four coming up uh, later this afternoon meantime the president's visit comes as michigan announced the winter weather in tennessee and kentucky has delayed vaccine shipments here. We talked about that as well. The state says that people should confirm their appointments before heading out because providers might have to reschedule. Today, Pfizer announced its vaccine can be stored in normal freezer temperatures. It's currently required to be in sub-zero temperatures and is shipped in special containers. But Pfizer says new data shows the vials can be stored in common pharmaceutical freezers for up to two weeks. We're going to get a new update from the state on coronavirus cases this afternoon. But yesterday, Michigan added 888 new cases and 85 deaths, 72 of which were from a review of records. A group of Macomb County restaurants have filed a lawsuit with the state of Michigan over their losses during the pandemic shutdowns. The lawsuit alleges the businesses suffered huge losses during the state's COVID shutdown orders, and they want to be compensated for those expenses and lost profits. Our lawsuit is simple in concept, but we think strong in its backing. Look, there's no doubt that no industry has been injured or impacted as bad as the restaurant, bar, and banquet center industry. It's been a very depressing time uh, to see our life's work, and in my case, 44 years, um, pretty much starting to go up in smoke. Attorneys hope to take the lawsuit to a jury trial. So far, no comment from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Forecast on this Friday as we are anticipating some snow. <sighs> it's been uh, just a repeat day after day, Brandon. Yes, if we get another three, four inches this month, it will be one of the top 10 snowiest Februarys in Detroit history. And we've got a couple of chances anyway. 
including today, but it's uh, pretty minimized by just scattered showers. Temps are 23, 24, 25 degrees, 25 Port Huron, 21 in Ann Arbor. West winds, west northwest winds are 5 to 10, so wind chills if you're heading out and about on this Friday afternoon. We're looking at lower to middle teens. Ah, just enough of a breeze there. Mostly cloudy skies. At times we get a little bit of sunshine, but we're also tracking snow shower chances after 3 p.m. Our high today will be 27 degrees. Right now the snow confined to extreme western lower and parts of western lower could produce enough uh, off of Lake Michigan for three to five inches. But coming back our way, Everett, it's gonna take a little while for these snow showers to get going. However, those who get them could see a pretty steady flow of snow for a short time. We'll keep an eye on that again later in the afternoon and evening. Another weekend storm that we're tracking coming up. All right, Brandon, we'll see you in just a little bit. We have new information this afternoon about a fire that killed one man and sent four others to the hospital overnight. It happened at a group home on Burns right near I-94 and Van Dyke. That's on Detroit's east side. Our Grant Hearns joins us now live this afternoon with more details on where the investigation stands right now. And do we have any idea what would have led up to this fire? Everard, they're a little short on details. Investigators are still working through this fire. But you take a look at this damage here, you can see just how intense this fire was. And we don't have a complete idea of the damage inside, but it could be likely that this house is a total loss. The Detroit Fire Department is saying they got the call around 1.30 this morning. The home here on Burn Street believed to be some kind of adult group home. Now, as crews worked to battle the flames, they discovered five men still inside, all between the ages of 48 and 65 years old. One of those men in his 50s died in the fire. Firefighters saying his body was burnt beyond recognition. The other four men were taken to the hospital for burns and smoke inhalation. One of those men, a 65 year old man, is still in critical condition at last check. Now, so far, there isn't an official cause for what started the fire, but they think it may have been an electrical fire, possibly starting with an overloaded power strip. At least one neighbor here told us this morning that the sound of breaking glass woke him up last night. It woke me up. That was it. And I came out to see what was going on. The house was ablaze. Uh, I started checking mine to make sure those embers wasn't flying over this way. Now, if you take a look at the north side of the house, you can see all of those broken windows blown up there that he was talking about. Those windows blown up all the way to the very top floor of that house. That damage extending around to the front door and the porch here behind me. Now, we are working to figure out if this is an adult group home and if that's what it is, who owns this home, who runs that home. So we'll hopefully have more details for you later this afternoon. On Detroit's east side. Grant Terms, Local 4. All right, Grant, thank you so much for the update there. We want to get now to this traffic alert. If you plan on using I-94 in Detroit this weekend, demolition work requires closing both directions of I-94 in between I-75 and Connor Avenue. That's on the east side, and it's going to start at mid at 9 o'clock tonight. MDOT is replacing the front Frontenac Street overpass, and the new bridge will replace the current structure that was built back in 1954. All lanes on I-94 are expected to reopen by 5 o'clock Monday morning. The group responsible for America's Thanksgiving Parade, the Ford Fireworks, and a whole lot more here in Detroit has a new chairman. The parade company named Robert Riney, the new head of its board of directors. He's the chief operating officer for Henry Ford Health System. Riney says it's an honor to continue the parade company's legacy. And we have a recall alert from Ford. The automaker is recalling tens of thousands of cars because they forgot that they might have faulty airbags in them. We'll tell you the models that are impacted. Plus, swapping one crisis for another. As power is restored in Texas, many are losing access now to water. We'll talk about the struggles that are happening there coming up next.